Hi, I'm Jim Matthew Sadler. And I'm WIM Natasha Regan. Welcome to this video, which is part of our series on Alpha Zero opening novelties. This is a game in the English, and we're looking at Alpha Zero playing on the black side and Stockfish playing on the white side. The game we look at is very sharp. It involves Stockfish sacrificing a piece quite early on uh, with 11 Knight F3. The opening itself is, is not that common at top level, but has been played in recent times by both Grishuk and Van Forest. It's a very exciting game. Uh, let's have a look. Yeah, let's have a look. OK, let's have a look at this game then. So this is Stockfish White against Alpha Zero Black, which is uh, just uh, different to some of the previous English games we've uh, we've been looking at. So Stockfish here starts with C4. And this was the only move that was specified. So we gave it uh, one C4 as the first move, and then both computers can choose what they want to play. Exactly. So uh, E5, G3, Knight F6, Bishop G2, um, and now Bishop C5. So here, Alpha Zero normally prefers to play D5 in a Sicilian type opening, uh, but this time it fancied to play Bishop C5 and get a sharper game. Yes, this is very, um, um, very interesting. It's uh, actually you, you notice that both um, um, Alpha Zero and Stockfish play uh, play this with white and black. So it's quite uh, quite interesting. It's um, th this uh, idea C6. Um, has been played a reasonable amount of times, although it's not the most common uh, system against um, uh, the two G3 English. Um, but as we um, uh, proceed through the moves, Knight F3, um, not one of the most normal things. But, I mean, we saw uh, the um, uh, what we call the improved Alakin English, where, um, you know, Alpha Zero was playing uh, uh, two Knight F3 after one C4 E5, just a, a video we did, uh, well, just a few days ago, actually. And you see that Alpha Zero likes this. When uh, when Black plays uh, C6, Alpha Zero does like to uh, to challenge that pawn on E5. Um, and after... Yeah. Alpha Zero plays E4, and this gets the game very, very exciting. Yeah, E4, and then Knight H4. So um, uh, this is also a slightly uh, unusual move. Uh, Knight G5 has been um, has been played quite a lot, but after Knight H4, then um, uh, we're right getting right in the middle of the complications. D5, and now number of moves have been played, but this is the the sharpest, latest try. C takes d5, c takes d5, d3. So it looks as if uh, black center is uh, is kind of collapsing actually. Um, you know, after all, white's got a lot of pressure on there, and uh, well, after cut to cut to cut be uh, um, a possibility. Um, but uh, but black's got a very sharp idea here. Knight g4, attacking f2. Um, I mean, you could block it uh, with uh, d3 to d4, but uh, but then that would release the pressure on the e4 pawn. So white castles, and now this move g5, um, attacking the knight on h4. Um, now, I bet you can't guess what white plays here. Well, there was a clue in the introduction. Well, it's um, there's uh, um, first of all that there's uh, there's a possibility here because um, um, Caruana played uh, d takes e4 in this position, so um, uh, and sacrificed the, uh, a piece in this way, which is uh, quite a, an incredible idea. G takes h4 and bishop f4. Um, this was against uh, Jordan van Forest at uh, at Zee in twenty twenty, and um, yeah, I mean this was quite interesting. Although um, I had the feeling that uh, that Black was doing uh, was doing fine. Um, the previous game, the, the sort of the first game in this line was a high level game in this line. Went uh, was Anton, um, and I can't pronounce his uh, his second name, so I'll just call him Anton, a Spanish player, very strong player against uh, Grishuk. Uh, who was playing in the candidates recently, of course, um, and that went d4, and um, um, in that game, Black played bishop e7. 
And uh, well, we may well have a look at this line um, in uh, future videos because uh, we also have some uh, some Alpha Zero stockfish matchups in uh, in this line. But Alpha Zero's preferred move was uh, is actually a novelty at um, uh, uh, over the board and also in correspondence, as far as I can see. Um, it's the move. Alpha Zero played Bishop B4. Exactly, Bishop B4, and. Um, uh, yeah, now we've got uh, an interesting choice here, and uh, um, and as uh, Natasha said, um, would will you be able to guess what Stockfish played in this position? Um, and uh, yeah, of course, as Natasha said, she also maybe gave you a little clue in the introduction as well. It's uh, what Alf what uh, Stockfish played was this astonishing move, Knight F three. Um, so it's worth pointing out, actually, that um, um, uh, Alpha Zero, when it had white in this position, played a much more normal move. Not what you uh, normally hear, is it? It's uh, um, So Alpha Zero played h3, and uh, the game proceeded, well, very interesting fashion, actually, as follows. Takes, takes, hg, queen b3, so forking the bishop on b4 and the pawn on d5. Takes, takes, knight c6, fg. And, uh, well, the, the move that maybe makes you raise your eyebrows a little bit, castles from uh, from Stockfish. Bishop h6, rook e8, rook f4. Um, and, uh, you know, just at first sight, you think, wow, you know, white's just got such good position. But um, but actually, Alpha Zero only assesses its uh, game as 52% expected score. Um, and the game, you know, ended in a draw, actually, uh, quite sharp. But black had, uh, I think, completely even chances. I think the, the main thing about this position is that the pawns on d5 and e4 are super solid, and they uh, restrict this bishop on g2, which would really be a, a very useful piece for attacking, um, you know, the pawns on f7, h7. And black can really solidify this pawn uh, uh, chain by playing a knight a5 into c4. Um, and then after that, yeah, white, it's not very easy for white to get its rooks into play to attack the dark squares. Um, I'll just give you a few more moves just to show what happened. Uh, Stockfish put its uh, knight on c4, um, bishop on e6, and then started rolling the pawns, whereas uh, alpha zero teed up on the king's side. Got very sharp, uh, Stockfish sacrificed a piece, but um, but the balance was, was never really disturbed. Um, so very, very interesting. Um, I mean... Uh, but Stockfish's move is uh, is astonishing. I mean, Knight F3. I have to say, when I saw it, I, I really, you know, did a double take. And um, uh, so E takes F3. And now, actually, even here, actually, there's um, um, there's a possibility. I mean, I played some um, some engine games uh, between my uh, neural net engine, uh, which is uh, Fat Fritz at the moment, which is basically Leela um, and uh, and Stockfish. And, um, well, Fat Fritz liked um, not Bishop takes f3, it's uh, Stockfish play, but E takes f3. And, uh, well, we were getting some lines like this. Uh, castles takes takes rook e1. Uh, let's give you a few moves. Bishop e6, Bishop a3, and c4. Very, very interesting. I mean, uh, what has white got? I mean, white's got um, a couple of pawns, two bishops, some weak dark squares, a bit of a lead in development. And, you know, Black's just got to basically, um, um, well, roll with the punches and, uh, you know, and, and, and try and survive for now. Um, so is that enough for the piece, do you think? Uh, this one's a, a little bit tight. In, in practice, Stockfish seem to be um, uh, getting the better of this one, uh, these types of positions. But very, very sharp. You know, I mean, uh, it's, um, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's just, it's very, very unclear. It's certainly a very interesting way of playing. But um, but I must say I do like Stockfish's way of playing. You know, just uh, Bishop takes f3, nice and calm. So attacking this pawn on d5. Um, so Alpha zero played Bishop c3, B takes c3, and um, yeah, probably a good moment just to uh, to reflect on this position. Um, so what has black? What has white got? And what has black got? Well, I mean, first of all, white's only got one pawn for the piece. So you know, as black, you're. Uh, you're pretty cheerful. Um, the only thing is, is that um, there's a, a lot of loose stuff in the black position. You know, that, that pawn on d5 is loose. Um, that pawn on g5 is definitely loose. And the knight on g4 is a bit weird. You know, uh, you wouldn't put it there normally. So, um, and actually the fact that the knight on e4 is loose gives white um, a possibility of playing e2 to e4, attacking the black center and also attacking the knight on g4. 
Now, I mean, when you see all that looseness in Black's position, also the fact that he's a bit, you know, behind in development. Uh, I mean, White, you know, may have the possibility of Bishop A3 just to uh, to trap the Black King in the centre as well. You, you sort of realise with Black that um, you're going to have to give something back. You're not going to be able to keep all your pawns um, and get your king developed and, you know, um, avoid any problems. Um, you're going to have to find some sort of balance where you give some stuff back and also, you know, hold some stuff for yourself as well. And, uh, well, I mean, I had a ton of ideas in this position and, uh, well, I didn't, luckily I didn't have to analyze them all myself. I could just, uh, throw them at my engines and, uh, and, uh, and, and they could have a go as well. I mean, there's moves like, um, you know, for example, uh, um, F5 is, um, is one idea when, uh, C4 was, uh, was, uh, uh, quite a common idea just uh, to, um, you know, just to open up the position. You know, there Black decides, OK, I'll keep my king side. But White gets, you know, this sort of position. I think this is the basic thing that White is aiming for. A couple of bishops. It's a really funny looking position, isn't it? Because Black's thrown all the pawns forward, but hasn't got the king safe at all yet. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, it's um, um, this sort of position, you know, with the, the two bishops, um, a big pawn roller, um, Black's position, you know, rather loose and open. You know, it's, um, well, very, very unclear. I mean, the, the results were, were all over the place, basically, with the, uh, with the two engines. Uh, so, you know, I mean, a very, very interesting position. Um, I, I do, th I think, you know, what Alpha Zero did was, was very sensible, I think. Uh, it was a good balance of, um, of, uh, of possibilities, though certainly not the only one. I mean, um, you know, it's, uh, um, so, here, in actual fact, again, Stockfish plays a fantastically calm move. Really very impressive. Um, so e4 is the obvious idea, just to uh, to break in the center, you know, attacking the knight on g4. And, uh, well, this was um, not h5, in actual fact, which was one of the my crazy ideas. But this move, knight f6, was the uh, the main idea. Then there was a couple of possibilities. Um, I think, um, yeah, bishop g5... Was, was one idea. E takes d5 is the main idea. Let's just have a look at bishop g5 first. So here black was taking, taking, going h6, putting the question to the bishop, and then playing bishop h3, queen f3, knight bd7. And um, yeah, I mean, you know, this is one of those, again, very complicated positions. Uh, um, white's got the two bishops, the center's open. Uh, white's got uh, two pawns for the piece. This knight is pinned. But Black's managed to develop himself quite nicely. Um, I mean, I had some some quite interesting engine games where, um, um, yeah, Fat Fritz actually was just giving up the um, uh, a rook like this uh, basically, and then just playing with its uh, with its bishops and um, and uh, and uh, well, two pawns. You know, I mean, it's very 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 interesting positions. But um, again, no um, no side really got a you know a big advantage there. It just seemed to be uh, quite balanced. Um, another idea that uh, the engines tried, uh, perhaps the main idea, was to go e takes d5. Um, and then after knight takes d5, well, one of the lines that cropped up a lot was um, uh, this move, uh, rook e1, knight c6, c4, and then an exchanging combination, actually. Knight c3, queen d2, knight takes d4, queen f6, attacking the, uh, the, uh, the bishop on f3 and with an x-ray along the a1, h8 diagonal. And after this move, this uh, thing, Black had given back the piece, but, you know, consolidated the position. So um, it just seemed like um, um, E4 was, uh, well, maybe, uh, um, you might say, a little bit early, you know, giving Black um, uh, maybe a, 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 an opportunity just to um, uh, to neutralize stuff a bit. So Rook B1 uh, really keeps the tension. I mean, what, what, what is happening here? I mean, well, this Rook is uh, attacking the pawn on b7, so stopping the, the bishop on c8 from moving. If you play, you know, a natural idea often is, you know, to play a move like b6 to uh, to defend the pawn, but then this h1a8 diagonal is open, so moves like uh, c4 or e4 will be even more dangerous. Uh, Weiss well, also got the idea of playing rook b5, attacking the pawn on b5, on d5. Just the idea, get rid of that pawn and then just throw your central pawns forward and get stuff moving. And um, also e4 is still in reserve. So again, I looked at loads of possibilities here. Um, again, f5, for example, when rook b5 is going to look to uh, to pick up that pawn. Um, knight a6 was uh, was vaguely interesting. 
uh, preparing to bring the knight round to c7 to defend the pawn on d5. We get, you know, these similar positions again, but uh, with the knight rather offside on a6 rather than supporting on d7. So that's uh, probably a little improvement for uh, for white. Um, but what Stockfish, what uh, sorry, Alpha Zero did was um, sensible. It's a nice balance and it's also quite active as well. Um, as you'll see, Black managed to get something back in return as well, which is quite nice. Um, so h6, e4 and knight f6. So Black's managed to defend the g5 pawn and is holding the center. Uh, but now White plays e5 and uh, pushes through the center. And Alpha Zero takes the most active option. I mean, I was also looking at playing uh, this move Knight H7 when uh, you know I'm actually claiming. Well, I've managed to hold my uh, G5 pawn, hold my D5 pawn, and now, well, I'm just going to hold everything and uh, and claim I'm fine. Um, the only problem here is that um, um, Black is actually quite passive, and uh, well, we're looking at uh, these sort of ideas, for example, with pretty good compensation for White. I mean, two bishops. The pawns are going to roll. I mean, once this bishop moves out of the way, f4 will come in. And this knight on h7 is really very passive as well. So, um, you know, this sort of Instead, stuff... Alpha zero keeps on going forwards. Exactly. Yeah, I mean... Knight e4. Knight e4, that's right. I mean, this is really a, a very typical alpha zero move. Uh, you, you try never to, go, uh, never to go backwards. And Stockfish took on e4 and, um, um, and then played this uh, pretty obvious attacking move, queen h5. And, um, well, all of a sudden, um, you can suddenly think, oh, my goodness, is this really, really dangerous for black? Um, because um, um, if you play a move like king g7, then, um, you know, f4s are going to be very dangerous. Uh, also, h4 is also an, a, a nasty little idea, just threatening hg5 and bishop g5. It's all starting to look very dangerous. Indeed. And you also notice, actually, that um, this rook, rook b1 move stops queen b6 defending h6. It's got another hidden point there. Um, but actually what um, Alpha Zero's plan is, it's, uh, it's all about colour complexes, which is, uh, well, quite appropriate. We talk a lot about uh, Alpha Zero's uh, knowledge of, uh, of, of colour complexes in, uh, in Game Change. We've got a whole chapter on that. Um, and it uses the white squares that, that it's, um, well, secured a hold of, really, by, uh, you know, exchange, letting that, uh, that light square bishop of whites be exchanged for the knight. And uses its queen to... Um, uh, uses those light squares to bring its queen back into play. Uh, bishop g5 and queen h7. So actually... Uh, the alpha zero is defending a bit like stockfish sometimes does. That's uh, right. By that's, getting that queen active, first that's, of all. That's right, you know, getting its queen uh, uh, right into the defensive action. Um, in actual fact, uh, stockfish has picked up um, uh, three pawns now for the piece. So, um, I mean, materially it's doing absolutely fine. Um, However, um, the, the, the great thing for black now is that it's got, um, you know, plenty of light squares for its pieces. So, I mean, the bishop can come to h3, a nice juicy square on the queen for f3 if it can get there. And there's also these uh, light central squares, e6, d5, c4, which are quite nice uh, places for the, um, uh, for the white queen. Um, actually, you know, the engines by now, they both think that this is just absolutely equal. Um, Alpha Zero is giving a 51% uh, uh, expected score for white, and I think uh, uh, that Stockfish was on uh, zero, zero, zero. Um, there's actually um, the drawing mechanism that happens uh, a few moves later in the game is already in the position. Um, but, um, well, as always happens, uh, Alpha Zero and, uh, and Stockfish, they both love to try and keep the position going as long as possible. And, um, you know, all these little shuffles are just there to, uh, you know, to try and um, uh, make the most of things. But um, uh, here, after bishop e6, um, queen f4, bishop c4, well, black's starting to get um, to chip away at white's position. Knight d5 is threatened, so stockfish forces the draw by repetition with queen h4, queen h7, queen g4 check, queen h4, and... Um, uh, yeah, and the draw was uh, was eventually agreed after a few more repetitions. So there we are. I mean, I hope uh, you enjoyed that game. Uh, I thought it was quite uh, quite an astounding little game, actually. Um, uh, very interesting, first of all, that because um, um, obviously we'd seen this game, you know, back in uh, in two thousand eighteen. 
Uh, but you know, the opening uh, line seemed quite exotic at the time. You know, with uh, with this uh, knight g4 and g5. Uh, so it's quite funny to see it. You know, coming up in top level chess um, a couple of years later. Um, so that's very interesting. And um, well, I mean, I think quite a, a quite a decent novelty there from uh, from Alpha Zero in this game. And uh, but I mean, really, what a stunning uh, concept from Stockfish. This knight f3. Um, you know, it's really one of those things where I just uh, you know look twice, look look, look at the uh, you know at the game score and say, what did you really do that? You know, and then um, and especially the calmness of the of the follow up. You know, Bishop F three, and then Rook B one. You know, very very impressive. Um, it's um, very difficult for a human to do because uh, when you play calmly like that, you often miss some you know obvious continuation that um uh that solidifies thing but i mean really excellent uh, judgment and i did like uh, alpha zero's defense here um um you know just a, a very active defense in actual fact um you know balancing stuff out and making sure that in any case even if you've got weaknesses you're also getting some uh, some stuff back from white so that also gives you uh, you know some added possibilities and in fact of course Alpha Zero managed to use those um, those light squares that it had uh, captured there um, in order to put up a you know a great defense. And uh, well, both machines uh, way ahead of us humans, of course, seeing the draw from uh, from a long way away. So uh, so there we are. I hope that's uh, that's interesting. It was certainly cutting edge theory in actual fact, and uh, a novelty in there from uh, from uh, from both machines. So uh, I think quite uh, quite interesting. Um, so there we are. I mean, I hope um, um, if you haven't uh, subscribed to our channel yet and you're enjoying our videos, subscribe. subscribe. And uh, well, if uh, you haven't uh, taken a look at Game Changer yet, well, all this uh, period of self-isolation and quarantine, it's a good moment to pick up Game Changer and have a look. And um, yeah, I mean, all this sort of attack and defense, loads more examples in, uh, in uh, you know, in Game Changer. And of course, uh, well, all these games, it's all stuff we'd looked at, but stuff that we just couldn't fit into that book. Otherwise, we'd have made it uh, a couple of thousand pages long. So, um, so you know, well worth, uh, well worth taking a look at Game Changer. But otherwise, you know, keep well, keep safe. And uh, well, we've got loads more planned. So, uh, you know, keep watching our channel. Thanks very much indeed. Watching.